Hey guys, I'm looking back here from the video guys today. I want to go ahead and just take a look. I didn't cover this in the video yet. So I want to cover man 21's gameplay deep dive. Now, obviously we talked a little about the gameplay in another video, but we didn't go as like deep into it as I would like to. So let's go ahead and cover it in this video. So first off, these are the things that EA is trying to fix in the game and we'll be fixing man 21, but it's matted. I mean, at the end of the day, there will still be glitches. There's still meta. There's still plays out unstoppable. And it's still going to be crazy. But some of the stuff, let's go ahead and just cover it. I have a video out there <coughs> covering this stuff. Simply put, stopping the run game in Man 20 was too difficult for the most. But I'm, I'm going to try not to criticize them. Man 20, you could run the ball every single play. And win the game. You could run the ball every single play. And then randomly. A guy's going to miss a tackle. And he's going to bust away a 60 yard touchdown. There's games where people do not throw the ball one time. In the whole entire game. Into a whole entire series of games. Ugh, come on man. We aim to make it more balanced. Okay. I like it. But when it says more balanced. And there's some of the over. Over. Um. All run fits and defensive gap systems. I get it because if you guys have not seen my video before, what they're talking about is there's a new way with the defense alignment, like new mechanic with them, which I do like. Uh, but don't make running the ball impossible because we have had mans before running the ball is stupidly under like performance. I hope they don't go ahead and do that. Anyway, though, strong emphasis for the on the force defender. Who is defending responsible for setting up the edge versus the run? Here are some improvements we made toward the goal. Force defenders align on the line of scrimmage at the snap. Use wide, wider angles at the start of the play to show more anticipation and better pursuit predictions to set the edge versus the outside runs. So pretty much what this is, I'm going to summarize what they're saying, is that no longer will we make defenders just play stupid and not understand if the guy's a stress play he's not just going to go ahead and run behind him hopefully force defenders to show more anticipation in their pursuit angles at the start of play when facing quick hitting outside running plays such as just sweep toss pass so that they'll get in better position to set the edges so better awareness pretty much better awareness this is what those two first bullet points is just about awareness. The awareness of the player to actually not be stupid. Hammer and fill players who are the defenders in the run fit responsible for the open gaps inside of the force player will take wider initial pursuit angles versus outside running plays that will help them get uh, over the top toward the outside of the formation quicker and prevent them from getting uh, mirrored up inside by blockers and other traffic. Okay, I like it. I mean, now players won't just get like all tangled up with the crap of other players. They'll actually go ahead and, you know, go for the outside run a bit, a little, a little bit better. I mean, again, like all things they're going to say, they're going to go ahead and improve. We'll see. Force defenders will have wider formation alignments in many base defensive formations, such as three, four, and more plays. With those base formations, we'll have the force player aligned on the line of scrimmage instead of off the ball. Edge and force defenders will have a wider gap. Okay, so pretty much there's a saying that, and I, I think again, new improved blocking interaction with defenders. Yeah, uh, defenders will have better anticipation of the ball carry movement. By picking smaller angles. So pretty much the whole summary of all of this. Players will actually have the awareness. And not play like a bot. That's the whole summary of this. Okay. Like there's words they use here and there. But the summary is. Players would not play like a bot. I like it. Hopefully it works. But pretty much again like this summary. Because like. Players will take correct angles. Players won't get tangled up. Players will actually realize and, you know, correctly use the smart technique on the play. Plain and simple. Tackling improvements. 
Um, defenders will now have much more aware when they engage in block near a ball carrier. They are triggered trigger uh, tackle attempts from these engaged blocks inside the trenches and, and open view versus impact blocks. Okay, so I'm guessing if this is what I'm thinking here, it's pretty much when you run the ball up the middle, if a D tackle is going into the center and you're right next to him, he'll reach over and grab you and try to tackle you. Um, I'm really hoping they're not going to make the D line too OP to a point where it just makes it stupid to play offense. I really, I really fear in this because especially how good this year was when it came to running the ball. I feel like the solution is, you know what? Bluff offense. We're not going to have any offense. We're going to make the defense so OP. No one's going to complain about the run game because you can't run. You can't pass. You can't do anything. It sticks and dive tackles have turned to make them more accessible and functional. Um, it sticks and dive tackles. All of them come together with our new break tackle, breakdown tackle for more intuitive defensive experience. I don't know why. I'm just getting the idea, man. 13 warp tackles. Don't, don't, don't bring back warp tackles. Don't bring back warp tackles. I know it's saying that now hit sticks and die tackles a lot more accessible. <sighs> I haven't played the beta. I can't get my opinion on this. I have this really awful feeling that is this going to be OP when it comes to defense? Ah, uh, no. All right. Location based tackles. These tackle interactions make our players much more aware of the field location we act accordingly. I love this. I do love this because how many times is it fourth and one and your guy goes to make the tackle for on the running back? He grabs the running back and throws him forward for a first down. Second off, how many times did your running back just run the ball up the middle in the fourth and one and not get a first down because, you know, he doesn't give a crap. I like that. I like this whole idea. I, I like this idea. That's my man 21 favorite feature so far is the fact that they're adding that to the game. Zone drop coaching adjustment. We introduced a new coaching adjustment will allow you as a defensive player to customize depth chart of your zone drop underneath zone defenders. These coaching adjustments will give you the ability to drop the depth of flat zones, hook zones, uh, increment of five yards, to 30 yards of line of scrimmage. Okay. I like it. Uh, including the deep zone, when facing no huddle, you can turn off the coaching judgment. Okay, yeah, see that, that, I like that. So you can turn it off if the guy keeps destroying you on the play. But see, okay, I think the way they're doing this is because of the fact that certain hook zones, certain, like, comeback routes, they do not get picked, like, the defender goes stupid, and it does not stop them. I think that's why they're, they're doing this. I think that's why they're perfecting this. I like it. All right, quarterback and passing improvement. Throwing out of a sack. All quarterbacks will have the ability to throw the ball while being tackled. Accuracy and power of uh, the pass are dictated largely by physics. The further into the passing animation quarterback is at the point of contact, more likely the pass will be accurate. However, if any point the quarterback arm shoulder is hit during the pass, that can affect uh, throwing accuracy. Throwing out of a sack does carry some risk. Earlier in the th throwing animation, the quarterback is hit in combination with the quarterback's strength. Rating is more likely he will fumble. Okay, so it's not about his carrying rating anymore, but how strong he is. Okay, I'm not mad. I'm going to kind of glance over a lot of these guys. I don't want to make this video like an hour long. But, okay, I like it. I mean, again, it's based on his strength, not based on... His carrying rating, which kind of makes sense. I mean, if he's in the parking and sacked. All right. Defensive containing balances. Contain balancing. When utilizing pass rush schemes that free up the certain player from being blocked, be an O load to either side, that player would now rush the quarterback at a slower speed than he is now. At, wait. If he is not in the contain adjustment, as long as the quarterback is inside the pocket, 
not using the scramble movement, the contained player will be moving at a speed slow enough to read the quarterback with the intent to get him in the pocket, but will not break <coughs> a full speed rush unless the quarterback starts to scramble. Okay. I don't see anything else I kind of want to cover. Uh, ability improvements, wide receiver, route running, balancing, okay. Kicking, gaming, I don't want to care about the kick. Uh, player fatigue for out of position, ball carries. After a player is not a running back by trade, such as quarterback, running back, or tight end, has carried the ball as a primary ball carrier on multiple consecutive play, thought to quickly deteriorate his, deplete his stamina. Okay, so this is to fix the Lamar Jackson power uh power burst option power o option that makes sense okay so they're trying to stop you from just using a skateboard on lamar jackson and running around like a freaking running back not bad for running back huh nonetheless though they're trying to stop that that makes sense um so again it or if you let's say for example you're running jet sweeps and wild cast with your wide receivers you got tyreek hill you're gonna get some stamina issues so especially if it's not a main running back, if it's actually just a quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. Balance for repeated audibles of play flips and pre-play. The offensive will now have a risk of the offensive line committing a false saw penalty after using multiple audibles. Oh. Oh. If the quarterback changes three to six times while sitting in the pre-play stance, the entire team will apply. Okay. I don't know how I like that. I don't know if I like that. So pretty much you'll say, you know, you come out on a run, change to a quick slant, and you're going to change to a deep pass. Now let's say this guy is just going to switch his defense to a cover four, right, and drop back. Now you're like, oh, I'm going to get you, buddy. I got a run coming now. Let's switch back to a run. That could cause a false start. I don't know. I don't know. Player personal personnel packaging. Play play audible system now considers the actual personnel on the field when playing your physical or your personnel on the play call menu, either via packages or formation subs. Your pre play audibles will now match the person package on the field using 12 <coughs> personnel on um, formation like gun empty flex. You will able to, you will be able to audible to any other formation in the playbook. They also use 12. Okay, so you can actually change little bit more you can you can actually um i say you can actually change your uh personnel and actually change the formation a little bit more uh rather than you could before guys tell me down below your thoughts and opinions i'm not going to cover all this it's a lot to read but i i wanted to cover the main points i wanted to get across guys tell me below your thoughts and opinions and i'll see you guys next one peace out